الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد we always hear during the khutbah during the khutbah al haja كل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار that every innovation in the religion is a going astray and every going astray leads to the hellfire then it calls to mind what do we mean by bid'ah by bid'ah we're referring to religious innovation in ibadah in worship to try to innovate something new in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion or in the belief system to come up with a new belief that the people from before did not know about or hear about or did not mention all of those things are tawqifi as the ulama say that they are things which are already delineated in the sharia and they are not up for discussion meaning that you cannot bring new principles about regarding worship and regarding belief aqida so i wanted to briefly go over a few things that allama Sheikh Saleh bin Fuzan hafizahullah ta'ala one of the hayat kibar ulama one of the major scholars in Saudi Arabia and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him and all the ulama of ahl sunnah wherever they may be the sheikh said al bid'ah arrafaha ahl sunnah wal jama'a bi annaha ma ahdatha fi din mimma laysa minhu fa man jaa'a bi ibadatin يتقرب بها الى الله وهي لم تكن في دين الله وليس لها دليل من الكتاب او من السنه فهذه بدعه بدليل قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم من عمل عملا ليس عليه امرنا امرنا فهو رد وفي روايه من احدث في امرنا هذا ما ليس منه ما ليس منه فهو رد so sheikh salah bin fuzan hafiz الله تعالى he said Bid'a, Ahl Sunnah defines bid'a or innovation as that which has been brought that's new regarding the religion, which is not from it. And whoever comes with a new type of worship to come closer to Allah, then it is not, and then that is not from the religion of Allah. nor does it have evidence for that action from the Quran and the Sunnah and if that's the case then that is considered bid'ah innovation and he said with and the evidence for this is a statement of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam where he said man amila amalan laysa alayhi laysa alayhi amrun fa huwa rad whoever innovates whoever does in action that is not from our affairs then it is rejected and then in another narration the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu wa fuhu rad the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever innovates brings about a new innovation in this affair of ours which is not from it will have it rejected so that right there lets us know what the stance of ahl sunnah wal jamaah is regarding religious innovation bringing new forms of ibadah new types of worship that were not mentioned in the quran and not mentioned in the authentic sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam nor mentioned by the salaf of this ummah nor ijma or or anything else but a new type of understanding a new minhaj or methodology of da'wah which is not taken from the Quran and the Sunnah and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for example you have people who are comedians who consider that they are doing a form of dawa through comedy 
But this is not legislated from the religion of, uh, of Islam. That doesn't mean we can't tell jokes. That doesn't mean we can't enjoy ourselves in this life ever. No. But when it comes to the affair of dawah, your dawah, your propagation of Islam should not be based on jokes and, uh, and, and comedy and making fun of people and, and doing things which have doubtfulness or possibly involve Muharram. Because this is where we fault some of the other modern day groups and sects which in order to come closer to the people and closer to the youth and gather the youth together around them, they make new types of dawah by, by uh, compromising the deen, by compromising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion, by making a comedy show, for example, or doing acts of entertainment, or even some of them go as far to, in their entertainment uh, regarding dawah that they do magic tricks and so forth. We, you know, the, the individuals who do this, they have to ask themselves, where in the religion of Islam does this come from? How is this bettering Islam in the eyes of the youth? How is this gathering the youth? If you're just bringing numbers of the youth, but you're not bringing them to the sunnah, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is a big problem. So it's not about the means do not justify the ends. Even if millions of people came into Islam from your magic tricks or from your comedy shows or from whatever or the, the plays, the Islamic plays and the Islamic whatevers, then this will not be of benefit to you. It will not be of benefit to you because you will not make strong Muslims by that, by that path by a newly innovated path. It will be rejected by Allah. Even if the outcome, even if Allah made that outcome, that people came to the religion. So you have to be cautious. And that is going by the qa'idah that the Prophet ﷺ laid down when he said, Man amila amilin, laysa alayhi amruna fuurad. Whoever innovates in this affairs, affair of ours or does an action uh, that, is, that is not from our affair, then is rejected, meaning any type of act of, uh, of worship, any type of act of, of a, a new methodology in trying to uh, understand Islam or trying to uh, propagate Islam, that it, it's rud, fuhu rud, that it will be rejected. That's the madhab of Ahl Sunnah. And that's why at a times it appears to some of our brothers and sisters that Ahl Sunnah seems to be harsh. Why? Because they're trying to close the door of innovation. They're trying to preserve Allah's religion. Because you do not know what the people 50 years from now will do from us. Even perhaps one or two years. But what about 50 years? When all of us are, are probably, most of us will be, will be gone. Or a hundred years. If the Salaf of this Ummah did not adhere strongly to that principle of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, the, the religion would even be more divided. And we wouldn't have anything left of its preservation because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved the religion through the, through the, through the minhaj of the salaf. By al rijal by the knowledge of the ruwat, those, those, the narrators of hadith who carried the religion, who, who preserved the Qur'an, memorized the Qur'an and preserved it and passed it from generation to generation, preserved it in those books, and they did it by being stern against bid'ah and innovation and stern against ahl bid'ah. That is the asl right there. That's the foundation. That's the root, the, the, the foundation that we should operate from. And then you look to exceptions. When, when is it permissible to do this? Or when is it permissible to give da'wah in, in a masjid of Ahl bidah or this? Of course, we should invite the people. Invite everyone. It's not, we're not a religion exclusively for anyone. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. But we look to the asl of the religion is that we should not, we should be away from innovation anything that has doubtfulness regarding ibadah and worship. And we should be away from the people of innovation who propagate that. If you have a group of brothers who come in the masjid who they're jamaat so-and-so, or they're jamaat so-and-so, or they're khwana muslimin, or they're this or that, and they distinguish themselves and they break away from the body of the Muslims, then no, that's a, that's a first sign that you should be careful of them. And a first sign that they're probably on religious innovation. Then it takes looking at what their creed is. What do they believe? What their minhaj and dawah is. Perhaps most of their creed might be intact, but their minhaj and dawah, they have newly invented ways of dawah. They say, hey, let's go, go for 40 days to Pakistan let's, or, or to India, and let's go here, and let's do this according to 
the program of our Shaykh or our Allama instead of the program of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's why we have to beware of religious innovation. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from kulli su wa makru wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.